welcome dear students to epg part sala i am dr prince cp assistant professor at school of social work roshni nilaya mangalore today we will discuss from the course fields of practice upon the module understanding livelihood here we are there to learn the definition and basic concepts of livelihood and to find out the indicators and strategies of livelihood to learn how the resources utilized in livelihood to get to know different types of livelihood and finally to study how to promote livelihood let's begin explaining the word livelihood we know that a person's livelihood is concerned with the means of securing basic necessities like food water shelter and clothing in life and livelihood has a set of activities and it involves securing water food fodder shelter medicine clothing and his or her capacity to acquire above necessities through working individually or as a group using endowments both human and material for meeting the requirements of the self and his or her household on a sustainable basis with human dignity regarding livelihood in 1992 robert chambers and gordon conway gives a beautiful definition they say a livelihood comprises the capabilities the capacity of a person to enter into a work and the assets they are the stores resources claims and access and the activities required for a means of living again a livelihood is sustainable which can cope with and recover from stress and shocks what are these stresses stresses are ongoing difficulties it may it can come at any time like financial difficulty or some uncertainties there can be shocks which are unpredictable like flood fire so that can be a challenge in the livelihood apart from these you have to maintain and enhance the capabilities and assets the capability is the capacity of a person to enter into a work and to pursue and there are a lot of assets both natural human and social assets and it provide a sustainable livelihood opportunity for the next generation when it is sustainable means anything that we do should be used for the next generation and it contributes net benefit to other livelihood at the local and global levels both in short term and long term and further to speak on the livelihood sustainability it ensures through the livelihood adaptation strategies what are these strategies there may be mobility it may be a storage it can be a land or certain natural resources available and there is also a communal pooling and there is a livelihood diversification and also a market exchange like instead of uh, one commodity you are giving another commodity for the use and it composed of certain activities with either natural resources or non natural resources of course natural resources are available in nature uh, for a fisherman fish is available in the lakes and rivers uh, for a farmer there is a land and he can cultivate there are non natural resources like finance and access to that finance maybe through a micro enterprises or through a loan from a bank and ultimately this livelihood has an outcome there is a security outcome and also an environmental sustainability outcome security outcome is more of economical where you are able to pursue the livelihood throughout and the environmental sustainability is the uh, nature as well as the conditions are favorable to continue your livelihood now we come to the very beginning of the livelihood the generation of livelihood 
there are those methods of earning the basic necessities of life through different sources of course any job we may not call a livelihood however job under an employer itself can be a livelihood because that helps uh, your life to go ahead running a vegetable garden going for fishing engaging in a craft work animal husbandry or collecting forest resources and selling gathering some material and selling in the market for a living these are all uh, of the generation of livelihood further there are indicators of livelihood and these indicators say that uh, creation of working days is important according to the famous economist Amartya Sen, there are three aspects of employment. Any livelihood should earn you an income, it should give you a production and there should be a recognition for the person uh, who involved in the livelihood. And there is another outcome that is poverty reduction. Based on the economic growth to generate efficient income earning opportunities for the poor, and improved access to education, health care and other social services. If it helps a person to overcome that poverty, that is the poverty reduction. And the third indicator is the capability. That is the capacity of a person to involve in a livelihood. It could be adequately getting nourished, comfortably clothed, to avoid sickness, lead a life without shame, to visit and entertain and friend and get along with the day-to-day -day affairs of life. Coming to the fourth indicator, that is the livelihood adaptation. Suppose you have difficulty in one livelihood, are you able to uh, switch over to another livelihood? That is the adaptation. And there is also vulnerability and resilience. What do you mean by vulnerability? They are the stresses and shocks which I told previously. Some of the challenges that come on your way, which you are able to overcome with various efforts. And resilience is the capacity to withstand in times of difficulties. And finally, there is the indicator of natural resource-based sustainability. Whatever the livelihood uh, you are involving in, when they are Based on some natural resources, there is a question of sustainability. How far it helps you to uh, pursue, whether there is a regular uh, access to those resources. Are you able to make use of it? Then your livelihood will continue uh, for a longer period. Now we discuss on the assets or capital for livelihood. There are different types of capital and the first one is natural capital. We know for a farmer, he needs a soil, water, he needs different uh, sources like power, electricity uh, and suppose he uses a machine, mechanical like tiller or tractor. All these are the stocks and there is also environmental services like the uh, hydrological cycle, the flow of water, the availability of water the pollution things and so on. These are the natural capital he uses. And there is the economic or financial capital. They are the cash, credit, debt savings or other economic assets including basic infrastructure. Whatever a farmer uh, cultivates, he needs to store them. Then the production equipment and technologies which he uses. And nowadays we know there are farmers who use mobile phones uh, and uh, controlling uh, from a remote place. He can control uh, pumping the water to the paddy field and also he can uh, know the different types of manure to be used in the farm and so on. So advanced technology he can use. So they are the financial capital. And then there is a human capital. We know without a person, we cannot engage into any livelihood activity. The skills, knowledge and the ability to labor 
and the good health and physical capability is important for a su successful pursuit of different livelihood strategies. And of course, a person has to maintain his health, uh, regular food, uh, and should have uh, sufficient clothing and a good house to live in. All these are the faculties related to human capital. And the next one is the social capital. We know either in agriculture or any other livelihood, there is a group of people get involved. Nowadays, there are self-help groups of women or men who are engaged in some livelihood. They are the networks or the social group that helps you to promote the livelihood. Thus, the social claims, social relationships, all these help in the social capital. Now we discuss on the resource utilization in livelihood. There is a sequencing in the capital. You need to have continuously a flow of capital in order to continue your livelihood. Then there are times you need to get into substitution of capital. Suppose some raw materials are not available, you need to uh, seek some other raw material which is close substitute. Uh, which you need to use and there is also a clustering of capital there are a group of capital you can pull together and make use of it for a better outcome and then how is the accessibility to resources although there are various resources how far they are accessible maybe the level of transportation maybe uh, how how far the distance of the production center and where the resources are available and the storing capacity of your go down all these are some of the factors leading to the access to resources and then there are trades of suppose suddenly there is a fall in the demand of your product you will have to get into another trade which may be closely substituting and there are you know farmers who engage in agriculture which is seasonal and in all season they engage in some other activities to substitute their livelihood they are the trades of and there is another resource utilization where you focus on the trends there are emerging trends in the market we know from the small petty shops it got into retail marketing and now there are the uh, supermarkets and e-commerce is the mark of the day so there are new trends and challenges which we face across how a person can accommodate according to the new trends again helps in the resource utilization so answering those questions in these areas will help a better management and utilization of resources for the best possible manner, in the best possible manner while planning for livelihood. Now we will look into a figure which shows the components of flows in the livelihood. In the apex we consider the people, they are the, their livelihood capabilities and they engage in a livelihood for a living where they have the tangible assets where they have the stores and resources which we discussed already and also intangible assets they are the claims and access like the availability of finance and the person's desire to uh, seek some financial help or his or her attitude towards a particular uh, livelihood uh, measures. So these are the claims and access. So both the tangible assets and intangible assets are pulled together and made use of in the best way possible to formulate a livelihood. Now we enter into the activities, different activities of livelihood. For example, home gardening. Uh, if I give you an example there is a study done in Nepal where they have studied the home gardening done in both rural and urban areas and they could find that 
with 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40 and different sense of lands the people are engaged in home gardening. They could find that both in urban where there is scarcity of land and also rural where there is plenty of land, both were successful in home gardening which required very little amount of time to engage in and the resources are uh, available in and around. They could make use of it and get into success. So home gardening is a major activity uh, which could be used in a micro environment. And there are groups like self-help groups who engage in the home gardening. Then there is something called common property resources. We know the forest resources, the river resources, different varieties of fish. They are naturally available. They are the common property. They are not uh, for a particular individual, uh, it is a private property. As it is common, anybody has an access. We know the Adivasis, the tribal people, they live with the resources in the forest. They gather the resources like honey, uh, then different uh, types of uh, seeds, different types of fruits, uh, resin. Uh, they gather them and sell it in the market down over there and get an income. In the entire course of uh, India, we have the group of fishermen who have their livelihood engaging in fishing. Uh, and there are off-season and on-season. Uh, it varies. The amount of fish they catch varies. However, there are people who find it difficult to engage in fishing because la uh, lack of finance, lack of necessary uh, access to some of the uh, uh, technical like mechanized boards and so on. So here a group of people can come together and you know, formulate a self-help group and approach any bank or an NGO, non-government organization who may fund these people and they can make use of uh, that environment to get the mechanized uh, boat either on rent or if they can purchase themselves and there is also uh, they will provide nets for fishing and thus engage in the activity of fishing. And another major problem faced by these fishermen is storing of the fish. And of course you need the storage with sufficient freezing facility, refrigerators. All these requires sufficient income. And of course when you are in a group, the banks are ready and you have the uh, great example of Grameen Bank of Muhammad Yunus in Bangladesh where these self-help groups could raise fund through microfinance and engage in different activities. There is another activity scavenging in majority of the poor people in both rural and urban are engaged in. And of course these residues which is a major menace for the people particularly in the town and those people engaged in scavenging the sufficient income and there is also a processing hawking vending and marketing we know food processing is a major industry and there are a whole lot of social entrepreneurship where people engage in the food processing and of course people prefer natural food homemade food therefore either individually or as a group if you engage in some of the food processing uh, products either you can start as a unit or you collaborate with a unit which is already there and engage in marketing that will give you sufficient income 
Then there is a share rearing of livestock. In India and in almost other South Asian countries, there are examples of how people engage in livestock and enter into a success story. It can be God rearing, poultry, uh, or uh, engage in uh, uh, milk breeding, cows. All these are some of the activities that help you to uh, get into a livelihood. Now we discuss on the livelihood promotion among the poor. Because the moment you discuss on livelihood, especially in a social work scenario, the livelihood of the poor is the matter of concern. We know we have the natural resources, but most of the time the poor people are not having sufficient access to the natural resources, either because of the transportation problem or they will have to make some payment for some of these resources which they are unable to do or there are some groups of people who are denied of these natural resources because of the caste and particular class they belong to. So you have to overcome those difficulties to get sufficient access to those natural resources. Then there is a problem of redistribution. When the resources are available, they are not uh, equally distributed among the poor. Those people who, are, who can influence, who have the money, they get the lion's share of the products. So that is the problem in distribution. There is also the matter of prices. The prices varies. And of course, you know, if the poor wants to engage in a livelihood, whatever he cultivates and sell in the market, he should get the price immediately. He should get the money. Then only he can invest in the uh, next issue and continue his livelihood. He may not have the facility to give his products on credit. Next is the matter of the health. You should have sufficient health to engage either in farming or fishing or collection of some of the forest resources. Suppose you are ill, the uh, Hospitality, uh, uh, the hospital expenditure is huge and you don't have sufficient income to meet your health needs. That is a major issue these days. Therefore, uh, health is a major concern. And there are also restrictions and hassles on the way, either by way of government policies or some of the hassles by the middlemen or some of the people engage in uh, major business as they find these poor people a threat for their business. So those hustles they need to overcome. And finally there is a counter seasonality and safety net. Suppose you have no sufficient income during off season, can you engage in some of the other activities, get in some coolie work or uh, some selling work which can earn you sufficient income uh, which can meet your daily needs they are some of the safety net uh, on your march towards the livelihood uh, now we come to the conclusion of the uh, this lesson on livelihood and understanding livelihood from its foundation it enables us to learn the five key elements in livelihood and there are different resources which we got familiarized like the natural resources the human capital the social capital and the finance and the assets which are available in the generation of the livelihood both tangible and intangible the tangible are the stores Whereas intangible are the claims and both we need to start a livelihood and to proceed. And further we learned about how this resource utilization method had to be analyzed framing series of questions like sequencing, substituting and so on. 
and finally various livelihood activities we analyze to get a bird's eye view of the livelihood around us. For your further reading, uh, I prefer you to go through some of the journal articles, the Chambers Schrober on poverty and livelihood, whose reality counts, and it is from Environment and Urbanization, Volume 7, Number 1, published in 1995, April. Then there is another report of the uh, Department of International Development, DFID, published in 1999 on livelihood approaches compared and prepared by Diana Carney and others. Again, there is uh, one more report in 1999, which is a subsection. And Ivan Schoons is a famous author who speaks extensively on the sustainability on rural livelihood and it is available in IDS Working Paper 72, Institute of Development Studies, published in 1998. And for your uh, exercise, I would suggest read any book on livelihood and social entrepreneurship. Any book that discusses on livelihood would be sufficient, will give you the preliminary ideas. Then as a part of the field work, you may visit any NGO that promotes livelihood either fishing or organic farming and engage in food processing and study the strategies of developing the livelihood and find out what are the challenges they face and how they overcome those challenges. Thank you for your patient listening. Hope you have understood the concepts of livelihood. It will be helpful in your social work, field work. Thank you.